In the previous few videos, we have talked about electrolysis using inert electrodes. Inert electrodes like graphite and platinum. So now we will move on to electrolytic processes using reactive electrodes. We will see the differences between inert and reactive electrodes soon. So first application is purification of copper metal in this setup. At the anode, we have the impure copper. At the cathode, we have the pure copper. And if we want, we want to purify copper, we must make sure that the electrolyte contains copper ions. In this case, we'll use copper 2 sulfate solution. So the ions in the electrolyte, we have copper, sulfates, and since it is an aqueous solution, there is also hydrogen and hydroxide ions from water. So we look at the cathode. At the cathode, we have the copper ions and hydrogen ions, and copper ions will be preferentially discharged. It will be reduced. form a deposit of copper. The anode is where things are different compared to previous example. If it was an inert anode, if this anode was graphite or platinum, then we will have hydroxides being discharged. We will get oxygen gas. Right? But this now we are using copper electrode. This is an active anode. Active anodes, they themselves become oxidized. So what we have will be copper. We have a copper metal here. The active anode will be oxidized and contributes copper ions into the solution. Right? It doesn't, it doesn't um, oxidize the hydroxides. So at the anode, we have the oxidation reaction, copper becoming copper 2 plus oxidation. So as the process goes on, we will have more and more copper deposited here. And then the anode will contribute copper ions into the solution, into the electrolyte. And then we end up with a smaller anode and then a larger cathode. The anode slime here, it could be other precious metals like silver and all that, okay, which they can recover and also sell for more profits. So let's see what other observations we can have for this setup. First of all, at the anode, since we do not discharge hydroxides to form oxygen gas, there's no gas evolved at the anode okay, as compared to the one if we use inner electrodes. The anode will slowly become smaller okay, as the copper metal become copper ions. The cathode will become bigger as we get more and more copper deposited on the electrode. Right, the color of the solution. You should notice that for every copper ion that we remove at the anode, or rather for every copper ion that we remove at the cathode, there will be one copper ion created at the anode. So there's always a replacement when one is removed. So the color of the solution actually remains unchanged. Right, it's blue color, it will remain the same intensity blue. Why? So because basically the concentration of the copper ions remain unchanged. Right, if this was, again, if you compare it to a inner electrode, we have copper being removed and hydroxides being removed here. The intensity of the 
the blue color solution will actually decrease because we are removing copper ions without a replacement. So, and one more important thing to remember where we should put the pure copper and the impure copper at the cathode or anode. A useful way to remember is we connect the electrode to the negative terminal. If we want to attract metal ions, metal ions are positive, so the place that we want them to eventually end up with, we want the place to be a negative charge so that it can attract the metal ions and the metal ions can be deposited there. 